everybody what's up this big old again today we are working on changing the spark plug wires for my um, the spark plug wires and the spark plugs for my 90 Camry uh, this is pretty much uh, a how-to quick how-to it's not hard to do especially on the inline four like this um, the thing is uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I had this car in storage for a little bit and fucking rats started chewing on my wires. This one was like almost all completely broken off. This one was on its way. So I might as well just do everything. Change the distributor cap and everything. So I went out Riley and uh, got me some new cables and a new distributor cap and GK spark plugs. I always believe that, me and myself personally, I always believe that I buy uh, the best that I can afford. Some people set aside a budget and, you know, they're like, okay, I'm going to set aside $100, go buy these parts, but if I can save 50 bucks, I will. Well, that's great. I mean, but I set myself a budget of $100 and I'm going to get as close to $100 as I'm going to get. So, you know, you get what you pay for. I mean, these were the only wires they had, so I would have got better ones. But they're, I've used them before. I've never had problems with them. Um... But yeah, I mean, you could, I could have got spark plugs for like 99 cents, 20, 70 cents. But these were a dollar something. They're like NGK's copper, which is better than platinum. Because those platinum, double platinum, quadruple platinum, that's just bullshit. Copper's the way to go. Iridium's the way to go. So anyways, back to the thing here. Um, we're going to need a uh, two tools. Phillips screwdriver and a ratchet, 3 8 ratchet drive with an extension. See, extension to reach into the piston well, I'm assuming that's what it's called, and or the piston where the spark plug lives, piston hole, and this, it's a 3 8 uh, drive uh, socket, spark plug socket. Uh, it's 3 8 or six, uh, 16 millimeter. What it does is it has a piece of rubber in there. That rubber is designed to grip the spark plug when, when you're pulling it out. So it's pretty much all you'll need. Now, I know this is uh, seems like an easy setup, right? You're just like, oh, fuck it. I'll just pull all the wires out. And I'm good. Usually on some cars, you got to do the wires in order. Um, the reason why you got to do these in order is because of the timing. Um, the, um, especially on older cars like this, it's a 90. It's got the old school distributor system on it. And each wire has a certain timing. One, two, three, and four. So not only does it... Anyway, sorry. Uh, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So it's easy. It looks confusing, but it's not. The thing I didn't want to see which is something you might never see, but sometimes you might. I just tried to uh, start taking off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this old spark plugs off, put the new ones in, and then do the wires one by one. So it's easier that way. But oil in that chamber. That means is I need to replace the uh, valve cover gasket. It's not hard on this car, it's just a bitch. Because of all the little shit in the way. But once I start taking this thing out, I'll show you some more stuff. All right. So I tried taking this out with two different sockets, um, two different spark plug sockets. I got it loose, like a goose, but I couldn't get it to bring the spark plug up. So there's two ways to do this. Easy ways to get the spark plug out once it's loosened without going crazy. One, get a magnet. Put it on here for whatever reason it's not sticking it'll pull it up or another trick i use put the this shit back on there the boot put on the old one and bring it back up yep it's covered in oil that means that i have a see the difference the new one and the old one these already come gapped 
but it's good to check them just to make sure so what you do when you put these in or back in you're going to use the, the bolt spark plug bolt and put it in there just like that what the fuck these don't even stick what kind of bullshit is that I wonder I couldn't get the bitch out doesn't stick. You see what I'm talking about? It shouldn't stick. Anyways, it normally these would stick in there. <laughs> and then you could just gently place them in there and make sure your threads right and you don't want to strip those threads. And you hand tighten those. Basically you, you tighten them until you you know you're softly tighten it. And then once you you can't tighten it no more just by going like that, it's pretty much done. I think it's like fifteen pounds. A pressure on there or 10 or something like that it's not a lot so don't go crazy because you'll strip that and then it's it's a bitch to fix um so yeah let's continue forward whatever silly reason the spark plugs sockets that i have the one that i have won't stick to these spark plugs or my old ones i remember doing this in the past and it worked so i don't know what the fuck's going on but i got the new one in there i'm about to tighten it um Again, uh, the way the re the way I got that in there is I used the old uh, spark plug boot cable thing. This put the spark plug in there, gently drop it in there, as so like that. Once the spark plug's in there, nice and even, I just twisted it a few times to get it to stick in there, and then pull this out again. That way I don't just drop the spark plug in there and bend the. Um, contact you know the spark part which is a little metal that bends so once I'm in there I'm gonna make sure see I'm tying it by hand right now just so I don't strip anything One turn, two turns, maybe three, and that's all she wrote. That's good. Oh, now you want to get stuck in there, bitch. Really? Now the bolt got stuck to the fucking spark plug. Ha! <laughs> that a bitch. There we go. Now I got it out. So we'll keep going. Yay. Run, doggies, run. No. All right, everybody. I'm just about done replacing the four. Uh, I'm on the last one spark plugs some quick notes um, Whenever I take the old ones out and put the new ones in I put the old boots on there if you're replacing the boots Put them back on top just like that. Just I mean you don't have to push them down that helps to keep trash out of from going in that chamber um, I'm on the last spark plug right now. Also another thing you got to be careful about these uh, Believe it or not and some cars, those boots, when they're connected to the distributor, if they, if the inside of that touches the middle of the car, it will short. It will fry your alternator. On some cars, I don't know if it's all cars, but I've had it happen before. And it happened to my dad, and it was funny, and then he was mad. And But, yeah. Um, don't let that boot, metal inside of it, touch any metal part of your car. So we'll continue. I'm doing the last one. Once I do that, then we're going to switch gears and remove the old distributor cap. Now this cap is numbered. See? One, two, three, and four. This is the timing I was telling you about. So, good thing is these wires are already on there in the correct order. So when I take off the old one, I'm just going to quickly take a glance at it and, you know, figure out what's what. But, I mean, this is pretty much already ready to go it's got three screws see so when this goes over here the bottom one is going to be a bitch to get to over here and I, I might have to take the air thing out of the way and uh i can get the top two pretty easy so yeah let's see is that thing pointing down yeah it's pointing down so first two on the sides and then the other ones on here okay it might not be as hard as i think it is because the it's like this see one screws here one screws there and then another screws there so it's like a triangle and this thing is like that 
here. So I think I'll be able to get to that without having to take this whole thing apart. We'll see. Rats chewed through my boots here. Why? God only knows. But I temporarily fixed it using a piece of wire on that and tape. <laughs> That's kind of silly, right? Um, but yeah, see here, I don't want this to touch my any metal of the car, so that's why. And this is how I'm taking these out, because my socket won't grab them. I put this part in there and twist them out. This one was torn, so I just use this, you know, and twisted them out. And then when I put them back in there, the new ones, I put the new one in there, put it in the hole. Woo, there it is. Then twist it to the right to tighten it in there just a little to get it snug in there. And then I remove the rubber boot part and then put it in my socket and finish tying it by hand shut up all right see what i'm talking about i'm twisting this once it's tightened up loosen it boom so if you didn't have that spark plug socket you could use one of these since this one's torn i'm just going to use this from now on in the future and uh that way i can just use a regular 16 millimeter socket or 15 or 17 loosen them Insert this in there, pull them out, and put them back in, and keep going like that. It's a great little tool. I invented it. Don't steal it. I call it the O puller. The O, O, O. Anyways, so let me put this here, just put a little trash in there. Now we will move forward to the distributor. I was trying to find a way to remove that without having to take the air pipes out the way the air intake stuff but might be able to let's see by the way this is the best air setup you can get the stock this is pretty much cold air intake if you do any other bullshit to it it's not gonna work um, there's certain other bullshit you can do where you can modify this shit here and run a air cord air from here or no, no no you modify this somehow you make a hole and make it so that it i don't know you make a hole to it i've seen a video where it said the guarantees extra horsepower but this is already cold air intake here so unless you get something way bigger or cool cooler cool cool your air even better then i mean there's nothing pretty much you can do maybe you can enhance the diameter of these pipes or something but i mean this car is designed to um run on the air that it's getting now you know so you would have to mess with the computer and slap people and stuff like that let's see let's take this bitch on or not the fuck is it like it's baked on there all right let's see if i can accommodate this an eight millimeter socket with a small ratchet or one quarter ratchet to take this off the old ones on this one are eight millimeter with a phillips head and the other the new ones are just phillips so i'd rather put the old ones back on there because they're easier to remove with the ratchet it's easier to get a ratchet in than a screwdriver i ended up having to take off the air thing to do okay so it got dark quick I took off the air thing and the other bolt is next to some fucking wires that are a bitch to get through I don't know if you can see any better but yeah you see that you see where my ratchet is? It's right there, that's the other bolt. It's next to a clip that holds that wire in there. They're extremely hard to get to. Without dropping a fucking screw. If you drop that screw, you're fucked. You're gonna have to use uh, the new ones, and those are just Phillips. So I'm pretty much done. 
just gotta put the wires back in order. I forgot the order. Well, I know two of them. Um, the number two goes up here. Two goes up. Four goes next to it when you installed it. And uh, the shortest one to the left is the first one. The longest one is all the way to the end. So I gotta look it up real quick to find out which one go in the middle. All right, y'all. So the correct order is for the spark plug wires is uh, for this is one. So it's I'm sorry about the light. It's dark. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four, four, three, two, one. All right. Four, three, two, one. One is the furthest. Four is the closest. So once I got all that shit back on there, I'm gonna put everything back together. Put the air thing back on. And then I'll be done. We'll see if this bitch turns on. One last thing I forgot to cover is uh, when I took this off. It's a 10, mil 10 millimeter bolt there to get that off. And there's clips here, four of them, four clips to remove this air box. You don't have to disconnect the wires or nothing. It would be easier, but you don't have to. And then uh, you put everything back together, turn on the car, and pray to Allah that it works. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's fucking hot in Texas in this already. It's like 90 degrees and it's, what? eight now <laughs> anyways so i got everything back i'm just gonna tighten the air thing and we'll see if this bitch starts well we're done she turned on nothing's misfiring uh i don't smell any unburnt gas it turned on right away everything sounds good um in the future i will have to get the the uh, oil that oil that was on those spark plugs that you saw um, fixed the gasket on the uh, valve cover so that's going to be another how to video in the future for now I'm getting this bitch street ready I'm going to put a stereo in here again I know it's dark in here you can't see but there's no radio there took it out put it in my other truck um, but I already made a how to video on that so yeah the idle's off it might be because of all the fucking oil and the spark plugs but the idle, the idle is way better than what it used to be. I used to idle at 1,000 and then drop to just maybe to 800 and then rack to 1,000. Now it's slightly over 1,000 right now. And it's just staying there. Like a, in, a hair above 1,000. So that's better than what it used to be. A shitload better than what it used to be. Um, I'm smelling the gas right now. The exhaust there's, it smells normal. I don't smell any oil burning. Or any more oil, oil burning. No smokes coming out. Um, and uh, car still on. <laughs> Floor it. See what it does. There it goes. Need to go put some gas soon. But uh, if y'all got any questions, let me know. Um, that's one way of doing it. I mean, it, this. You don't have to necessarily do follow these instructions for this car. You can do it for any, pretty much any car. Follow the guidelines that I presented. That's how I do it. Now, if we were doing it in a more modern car, you're gonna have uh, the coil on the plug, and that's a little that's way different than what I was doing. I was doing the old school distributor. So now, there are some cars that don't have a distributor at all. So you got the coil on plug, which uh, is controlled by a computer. And the computer, you know, can detect misfires and stuff like that. Which is pretty cool. Um, see, now it's at steady 1,000. So, anyways. Yeah, so, um, got any questions? Uh, send me an email, leave me a comment. Um, anything good, leave me a comment. Anything bad, leave me a comment. Suggestions, leave me a comment. I am by all means no professional, but... You know, I don't mind getting my hands dirty if I have to. Um, if I made any mistakes, point them out and I will fix it. Um, so just let me know. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Today we are removing the alternator from 90 Camry. I found videos on how to do this for 91 through 96. 90 is pretty much the same damn thing. 
but I'm just doing one just in case you guys are looking for a 90. <laughs> um, yesterday, this thing was sparking from there, like big time, and my battery was dead, so I'm going to go take this alternator to get checked. This battery has been failing me in the past, but I don't know if it's because of the alternator or the battery. So the first thing you want to do is remove the ground from the battery. The ground is the black cable, usually black, and uh, will be labeled negative on the battery. Um, if not, you can always find the red by the main fuses for the car, which this one might be busted. <laughs> but that's where the, this is the red cable because that's where all the main fuses are at. And this is the ground, so that's what we're gonna remove. That's the first thing you wanna do. Okay, uh, once we remove the battery, negative battery post, that's a 13 millimeter, you're gonna wanna remove, remove the connection for the alternator. It's got two of them. It's got one here, and then one on top. So, this one, you gotta be a little bit careful with because it's a plastic connection, like a clip-on. That one's a bolt, I think it's a, maybe a 10 millimeter. So, you gotta remove those very carefully.